Question. I recently read verse 96 from Surat Al-Ma'idah, which speaks about the game of the sea and its food being lawful. What exactly does the verse mean? What does game of the sea and food of the sea refer to? I have seen some scholars who disallow the consumption of lobster, shrimp, and other marine animals. How can we determine what is and isn't lawful to eat from sea creatures? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabiyin Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in The general rule when it comes to lawful and unlawful, especially as it relates to worldly non-religious issues like food and drink, is first, liberty and permissibility. Everything is allowed except what Allah or His Messenger have explicitly prohibited. And second, what Allah or His Messenger had legalized cannot be declared illegal by anyone, regardless of their knowledge or standing. Al halalu ma halahullah. What Allah has made legal is legal. Wal haramu ma haramahullah. The prohibited in Islam is only what Allah has prohibited. And this is afforded by the hadith narrated by a number of the Prophet's companions, among them Abi Dirda. Salman al-Farisi and Abi Thalaba, in which the Prophet Sallallahu he said, ما حله الله في كتابه فهو حلال وما حرم فهو حرام وما سكت عنه فهو عافية فاقبلوا من الله عافيته فإن الله لم يكن نسيا ثم تلا هذه الآية وما كان ربك نسيا So when this hadith the Prophet said whatever Allah has legalized in his book is legal Whatever he has prohibited is prohibited, and whatever he has elected to be silent about is clemency. So accept Allah's clemency. For Allah was certainly not forgetful. Then he recited the verse in which Allah says, and your Lord is never negligent. So, regarding the consumption of marine animals specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uhilla lakum sayyidul bahri wa ta'amuhu wa lissiyara. Lawful for you is the game of the sea and its food as a provision for you and the travelers. And this is the verse mentioned by the questioner in the question. Allah also says in Surah Fatir, وَمَا يَسْتَوِ الْبَحْرَانِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ وَهَذَا مِلْحٌ أُجَاجٌ وَمِنْ كُلٍ تَأْكُلُونَ لَحْمًا طَرِيًّا And not alike are the two seas. One is fresh and sweet, palatable for drinking, and the other is salty and bitter. And from each of them you eat tender meat. And in the hadith of Bihurairah, collected by Tirmidhi and Abi Daud, the Prophet was asked regarding the suitability of seawater for use in ritual purification, to which he replied, huwa tahuru ma'u al-hillu maytatu. The sea, it is pure, I'm sorry, its water is pure, and consumption of its dead animals is lawful. So now, the questioner asks about the meaning of game of the sea and food of the sea. So game of the sea in the verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah is whatever is caught or fished from its water alive. And the meaning of its food in the same verse is what has died and floats on its surface or has been cast from its tide onto the shores and beaches. This is how the verse has been explained by Ibn Abbasin and Abi Hurairah. And this meaning is further affirmed by the hadith of Abu Hurairah collected by Tirmidhi Abu Dawood, the one we just mentioned, where the Prophet said, "Huwa tahuru ma'u al hillu maytatu." The wording of all of the texts that we've mentioned so far, the two verses from the Quran and the, the, the hadith of Abu Hurairah, the wording of all these texts is general: game of the sea, its food, its dead animals. All these are general wordings from the Prophet. So I'm going to encompass everything and anything from the two bodies of water. What Allah and His Messenger legalized, and we have to understand, brothers and sisters, whatever Allah and His Messenger legalized broadly cannot be restricted without evidence which supports restriction. Because Allah and His Messenger know the meanings and implications of the words they speak and are perfectly capable of choosing restrictive expressions like fish. If Allah only wanted it to be fish, He could have said fish. If the Prophet only wanted to be fish, He could have said fish, but instead they spoke generally. Sayyidul Bahri, the game of the sea, general. 
Ta'amuhu, its food, general. Maytatu, its dead creatures or its dead animals, again, general. If Allah and his messenger want to be specific, they were perfectly capable of choosing restrictive, specific language. And your Lord is never negligent. Your Lord does not forget or fail to say what needs to be said to give clarity. So if he speaks broadly, he means for it to be broadly. Or he means for it to be understood broadly and applied broadly. Now there are some ahadith attributed to the Prophet restricting what marine animals can be consumed. But none of them are genuine sayings of his. And they cannot therefore be used as evidence for restriction because of their weakness as clarified in some detail by Al-Qurtubiyyu in his tafsir. That said, any creature which lives entirely or mostly in a body of water regardless of its name, catfish, dogfish, seahorse, etc. People sometimes they look at the name, oh, we can't consume it because we can't consume cats, which, for example, are non-marine life. We can't uh, consume dogs, so we can't consume catfish and dogfish and seahorse. No, the name of the fish is irrelevant. What's also irrelevant is the repugnance of a specific type of marine animal in certain cultures. Certain people in certain cultures don't eat certain marine life. But the fact that people in a certain culture don't eat something doesn't make it haram. Also, it's consumption being discouraged or banned by certain scholars like shrimp and lobster. There are some scholars who permit marine life generally, and then when you come to lobster and shrimp and some other specific types of marine life, they prohibit them. The fact that a scholar prohibits something doesn't make it haram. As Ibn Taymiyyah used to say, Kalamul ulama yuhtajju lahu wa la yuhtajju bihi. The statements of the scholars, we seek evidence to support them and we don't use their statements as evidence in of themselves. So the fact that a scholar prohibited doesn't make it prohibited. We need some evidence that it's prohibited. Also, it's appearance that inspires revulsion. Sometimes there's some uh, sea animals like blobfish and hagfish. They're so, part of my expression, disgusting looking that people say, oh, you can't, how can you possibly eat that? Again, it's included in the broad wording of Allah and his messenger. And so it's permitted unless we have proof to the contrary. Despite all of these considerations, these Sea animals are lawful to eat and can be consumed whether caught alive or even if they're procured dead prior to their decay. And this is the opinion of Imam Malik, a Shafi'i, al Awza'i, in one of the two opinions narrated from him. And it is also the confirmed opinion of Abu Bakr, Siddiq, radiallahu anh, and Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anh, who are the two rightly guided caliphs, and the more authentically reported view of Ali, radiallahu anh, who based upon his personal practice. In this view, that we just mentioned is also supported by the, not only is it supported by the evidence we mentioned previously, the two ayat and the hadith, but it's also supported by the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah collected by Bukhari and Muslim that mentions that Jabir radiallahu anhu and some of his companions were traveling along the seashore and came across a dead whale that had washed up onto the shore. They ate from it for several days until, as Jabir said, they became fat from consuming so much of it. Then Jabir radiallahu anhu mentions that they return with some of the whale meat to Al-Madinah. And he says, فَلَمَّا قَدِمْنَا الْمَدِينَةَ أَتَيْنَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَذَكَرْنَا ذَلِكَ لَهُ فَقَالَهُ رِزْقٌ أَخْرَجَهُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ فَهَلْ مَعَكُمْ مِنْ لَحْمِهِ شَيْءٌ فَتُطْعِمُونَا قَالَ فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْهُ فَأَكَلَ he says, when we returned to Al-Madinah, we went to the Messenger of Allah and mentioned that to him. Hey, Messenger of Allah, we found this whale and we ate from it. Whereupon he said, it is a provision which Allah has brought forth for you. Do you have any of its meat left to feed us with? The Prophet was asking for some of the meat so he could eat it himself. So we sent some of it to Allah's Messenger and he ate it. So all of the above, brothers and sisters, provides ample evidence to support the view of the majority of the scholars that all marine life, alive or dead, can be lawfully consumed and to repudiate at the same time the view of those scholars who dislike or prohibit it. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakhanu Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.